Whole Foods does not have to be the most expensive place that you shop, I promise you. Yeah, people joke, call it Whole Paycheck, I totally get it. But the reality is we can walk into Whole Foods and we can get in and out of here for under $200 for a family of three or four. I know it sounds like a lot, but that's really not too bad considering you're getting good, healthy food that you can't get other places. So let's go ahead and let's take a dive through there and see what we can find. And we'll break down all the science, we'll break down all the details, and we'll get down into the nitty gritty of just the good, the bad, and the ugly, and some of the sneaky stuff that's out there that you need to be watching out for. So let's head on in to Whole Foods and spend that whole paycheck. All right, so today's whole premise is clean keto on a budget. Clean keto at Whole Foods. Not dirty keto, not greasy burgers all the time. We're talking good, clean, healthy stuff. We're gonna go straight to the meat department first and start off there and then work our way back towards the produce department and then hit the aisles in between so that we fill in with other things there as we need them. As you learn your grocery store, you might have a different pattern in terms of how you shop. But I always like to go hit the meat department first simply because it gives me an opportunity to kind of get what I... So I like to hit the meat department first because it gives me an opportunity to sort of blow my budget on the most expensive stuff, things that I know I'm gonna need. So for me, the meat ends up being the most expensive piece. So why not go ahead and select what we can there and then see what my budget looks like after the fact. Okay, so here's the thing. Whole Foods is a little bit funny with their meat. Just because it's at Whole Foods does not mean that it's organic. And some of the important things I want you to remember with uh, chicken, for example, see how it says no antibiotics or no added hormones? That doesn't really mean a whole lot. I've talked about in many videos, it needs to say never any antibiotics or never any hormones. This just means that there's no hormones or antibiotics in the last 30 days. So we don't wanna go with that one. We do actually wanna spend a little bit more and go for the organic one in this case. Let's see what we've got. You know what, okay, so $7.49 a pound. Trader Joe's is like $6.99 a pound for organic. So this really isn't even bad. So chicken raised with no antibiotics ever. Okay, that's what we want. That's what's really important. Raised without added hormones, super, super important there. So this is actually a really good price for this. I'm gonna get this. Okay, so I know it sells 25 bucks, but we get, this is like enough for, I don't know, realistically, three meals? I mean, I'm totally gonna get that. So that's a great, great deal. Cheaper than what you're gonna find at most grocery stores. All right, check this out. This is the nice thing about Whole Foods. You don't always find this at other places. So what do we have here? We have chicken livers. I don't know if they have beef liver here hearts and gizzards. Some people might get grossed out by this, but when you're doing keto, this is going to be the best source of coenzyme Q10 and the best source of vitamin D that you can possibly find. Okay, now you've got a little bit of a, got a meat saw going on in the background, so I don't know if you can hear me okay. But anyway, point is, coenzyme Q10 is going to help out what is called the electron transport chain. When you're in keto, you're trying to optimize as much as you can in terms of the energy that travels down what's called the electron transport chain. That is literally what creates energy in your cells one or two of these little things is all you need. So I'm gonna get just the smallest one, $3.47, and this literally is gonna last me for the week, and it's going to be way cheaper than spending a bunch of money on coenzyme Q10 vitamins, so I am gonna get that. Okay, let's go take a spin around the other side here. Ooh, actually, let's take a look at bacon real quick. I could do a video just on bacon in itself. So many options with bacon. The main thing with bacon, I don't want you concerned with the nitrites and the nitrates. Generally speaking, if you're at a store like Whole Foods, the nitrites and nitrates are going to be coming from uh, celery and things like that anyway. So really not a huge, huge deal. We're mainly gonna look at just uh, the type of cut. I really like, okay, you always wanna go for a fattier ribbon. Let me show you an example of what you might wanna avoid. You see how the fat here is super marbled in? That's actually not necessarily a good thing with bacon. We actually want bacon to have a thick ribbon of fat along one side because that tells that it's coming from a better area of the pig to actually get a higher quality cut of meat in terms of the fat content. Pork does not have the best fatty acid profile, okay? It's high in specific polyunsaturated fats that are not as good for you. So we need to find a cut that is going to be leaner and it has a thicker ribbon of fat because that's gonna mean that that's pure saturated fat, which is the kind of fat in this particular case that we want. I know it sounds totally backwards, so this particular one isn't what we wanna go for, but let's see if we can find. Applegate's usually good. There we go, that's actually not bad. No sugar, uncured bacon. Yeah, we want the uncured, no antibiotics ever. Humanely raised, it's always nice. Yeah, see how it's nice and lean? And we have a thick ribbon that we could trim out if we need to. 
This is actually much better. Let's look at the ingredients. Organic pork, water, sea salt. That is really good. Applegate's done it well. Okay, so I do want some bacon, so I'm gonna get this. Um, now it is expensive, that's the only hard part. So it is, being that we're on a budget, this makes it a little bit tougher. Let's see if there is a cheaper one to go with. Hmm. Looks like we're spending around the same amount of money no matter what. So I can spend a dollar more and get the really good stuff, or I can spend a dollar less and get the not so good stuff. Let's see what this one is, about $5.99. Pork, sea salt, spices, vinegary. This one's actually not bad. It's a little marbled though. Let's just find a good cut. I'm gonna try this Welshire. Yeah, this one's this one's a good cut here. Do we get a little bit more? 74 cents per ounce versus 99 cents per ounce. Yeah, that's 25% cheaper. So I'm definitely gonna go, being on a budget, I'm gonna go with the Welshire brand. And again, you shouldn't be overdoing bacon. You should be keeping it nice and easy anyway. Let's go ahead and look at the other side of the meat department and then we'll go take a look at, um, take a look at some cheeses and some produce. Let's see what we got here. Ground turkey. I highly recommend you go for ground chicken instead of ground turkey. Ground turkey is much higher in hormones, much higher in antibiotics. Now it says no antibiotics ever administered, which is nice. Uh, complete traceability, that's always nice. But the fatty acid profile of ground chicken is going to be better than that of ground turkey. So let's see if they have some ground chicken. And if they don't, I'll get ground turkey because this isn't, what's the price on this? Seven ninety nine a pound. Okay, we'll come back to that. That's not a bad price. Let's see if they've got chicken. Cool, we got bison here. I've done a lot of videos talking about beef and things like that. If you're going for, let's see, pasture raised, Here's the sucky thing is pasture raised doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that it is grass fed, grass finished. It just means that at one point in time, uh, it was on pasture. So sneaky. Let's see, Eel River, organic ground beef. Oh, okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, I actually found this. I don't even know what the price is on this. I can't, looks like it's like 11 or 12 bucks a pound, but this is actually good stuff. Okay, we've actually got grass fed, grass finished. A perfect example of what you need to be looking for at your grocery store. It has to say grass fed, grass finished, okay? No added hormones, no added antibiotics. Perfect. Okay, now fun fact though, bison has different FDA requirements. So bison has to be grass fed. Doesn't necessarily have to be grass finished, but it has to be grass fed even if it doesn't say it. So that's the cool thing. Um, let me check on the price on these really quick because I can't see because I can't read upside down. 9.99 for ground bison. Yale River organic ground beef. Nice. $6.99? Oh my gosh, that's a really good price. To the point where I'm not even gonna bother with the bison this time. I'm gonna get two things of this. This is $7 for grass fed, grass finished. Unbelievable. Eel River, way to go. Okay, let's go ahead and, I didn't see ground chicken, so we do have to get the ground turkey. Okay, so ground turkey, 43 cents per ounce. Here's the, here's the interesting thing, with ground turkey, you're gonna want, if you go with ground turkey instead of ground chicken, you wanna get the leaner one. So here we have ground turkey and here we have white ground turkey. I recommend going for the white ground turkey in this case because the fatty acid profile of ground turkey is not good, okay? Ground chicken, the fatty acid profile is decent. Ground turkey, it's not. So if I am gonna get a ground turkey, I wanna get it lean and white meat. So this, seven ninety eight bucks, okay? But I think we're set for meat for, you know, a family of two to three, okay? I've got, a, a pound of white meat ground chicken. I've got a bunch of chicken breast. I've got a bunch of ground beef. We're looking pretty good there. Hey, what's this? Is go We're literally filming a grocery haul. What's going on, man? Good to see you. I'll be watching it next week, no doubt. Uh, this is probably, yeah, December sometime. <laughs> good to see you, man. Talking all about chicken livers. I know about that. <laughs> good to see you, Rick. So, the difference between the air chilled. So the difference right here, so we've got 549 per pound versus 749 per pound. Okay, the difference here is that one is organic, one is not, but it's very deceiving. That is a really, just a not a bad markup for organic. So we really want that. The other thing that's really important to know with uh, chicken is you actually want to go for the lean breast versus the chicken thigh on keto. You don't need to go for the high fat cuts of white meat, go for the high fat cuts of red meat. So the chicken thigh, you're gonna have a bunch of the 
fats from the skin and the fats from the actual dark meat itself and it's just not the best fatty acid profile. You're gonna get all the toxins that come in from the soy and the grain that the chicken inevitably ate, and that's gonna carry through in the fat, whereas the fats in the beef aren't as big of a deal. The fats in the chicken are. Keep it lean when it comes to poultry and lean when it comes to fish. Let's go ahead and let's take a look really quick at the, the eggs. So you might be looking at this being like, is that enough protein for a family of three? Like really? No, no maybe not if you're you know, just relying on that. Here's where you have to focus on the eggs. The eggs are interesting. I wanna talk about the egg whites for a second. Egg whites are the most inflammatory part of the egg. So you're not doing yourself a service by getting a carton of egg whites. It actually doesn't help you out a whole lot. And the reason is, is because the egg white is, that's like the uh, placenta. That's what's feeding the yolk to grow, which means it has all the immunoglobulins, it has all the antibodies and things like that, which sound like a good thing, but those antibodies aren't what humans want. Those are antibodies for a chicken. We are going to have an immune re reaction to that because those are the wrong antibodies. So if you ever uh, feel like your ears get hot or you get flush when you have eggs, it's because it's the whites. So I just don't want you to waste your money on the whites thinking that it's a healthier option, especially if you're doing keto. So let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got so many different options and it's so much to try to decipher. Um, I will just cut to the chase here and tell you right then and there that Vital Farms is the cleanest in terms of pasture raised here. But we have um, let's see, organic pasture raised and regular pasture raised, 599 versus 649. So right now, these are on sale. If you could go organic and pasture raised, that's the cream of the crop. That's really what you're after. So 649 for a dozen there. Non-GMO pasture raised just means they're still fed soy, they're still fed grain but they're just not fed um, GMO soy and grain. So at least here, we're gonna be reducing the amount of soy and grain that we would normally be getting in. Don't worry about going for the omega ones. It doesn't make much of a difference. The omega ones really, it just means they're given a little bit more in the way of maybe some flax meal and stuff like that. It's not gonna translate into high omega threes for you uh, because by the time it gets into your body, it has to go through multiple fermentation processes, uh, converting what's called alpha linoleic acid into different forms of echosapentaenoic and uh, docosahexaenoic. So, oh, you know what though? Bang for the buck though, 38.3 cents uh, if, I, if I get the 18 pack versus even though this is organic pasture raised, I'm okay with not going organic if I can still get Vital Farms and get it at that price. 18 is a much better deal. Let's see, 54, yeah, 38 cents an ounce. Uh, that's, that's a really good deal, seven bucks. Okay, you're gonna spend maybe four or five dollars at a regular grocery store for regular eggs and not pasture raised. Like that's just a no-brainer. Cool thing is we haven't even hit the fish department or the frozen department. You can absolutely get your protein requirements in. Okay, let's go ahead and let's take a quick stab at the produce department and just get through that. Cool thing is you don't need as many veggies from the fresh produce department as you might think. I get a lot of my veggies from the frozen department, which we'll flash forward to in a little bit. The frozen department is nice simply because you end up with uh, things that are flash frozen, which ends up making it a lot cleaner for you because they're not oxidized. So let's go ahead and let's see what I do want to get fresh. And then we'll go back through, we'll take a look at the nut milks, we'll take a look at the cheeses, and we'll go down some of the aisles, uh, aisle by aisle, and show you what I might get. Now, if you're on a, bu if you're on a budget, I'm just gonna stop here for a second, this probably isn't the best route to go. On a budget, this can be really tough to get like smoked salmon and stuff like that. But there's a lot of evidence showing now that caviar and fish roe and masago is that very high in a specific kind of omega-3 called lyso-DHA. Really interesting stuff, crosses through the blood-brain barrier and gives you specific fats to the brain. So if you're trying to get good brain function, caviar is not a bad way to go. It's ex expensive though, right? Uh, I do think they actually have, yeah, you can usually buy masago, the straight, like the fish eggs you would normally get on sushi and things like that. And that's a lot cheaper. That's like three, $4 a pound. Anyway, smoked salmon also good too. You just want to be careful of Norwegian salmon. Let's see if I see it anywhere. Scottish, uh, Nova. Yeah, I don't even see Norwegian. Right now, Norwegian's under a lot of scrutiny. Uh, heavy uh, mercury content, a lot of scrutiny right now. Scallops. Oh, if I wasn't on a budget, I'd be loading up on scallops. Just so you know, if you're not on a budget, frozen scallops are totally okay wild caught, they're frozen immediately. One of the best profiles of vitamin D that you can get, one of the most abundant amino acid profiles, truly is a superfood in my opinion. Wow, Gulf wild white shrimp, cooked white shrimp. This is not a bad price. 
20 bucks for this, but I'm, I'm not gonna get it right now, but 20 bucks for two pounds of shrimp, $10 a pound, not bad. Okay, sorry about that diversion there. A lot of times we get kicked out of uh, grocery stores. Whole Foods is usually really, really cool because I think the management here knows me and knows that it's always positive stuff. So hopefully we won't get in trouble. Let's see. Wow, not a whole lot out of the fresh department I would really need. Maybe some fresh berries. Let's go grab some berries. Actually, that's, that's expensive right now. That's gonna be better to go the, fresh, uh, the frozen route. Okay, we might have to come back to the produce. Okay, here's a good chance to talk about the nuts for a second. I am a big fan of doing keto without a ton of nuts. And the reason I say that is simply because nuts, they can be pretty inflammatory on the system if you consume a lot of them. It's just easy on keto to go overboard on the nuts. So let's see if we can find, what I would go for is usually going to be the pecans or the walnuts. Let's see if we've got walnuts anywhere. Yep, we got walnuts here. So still $9 a pound, $8 a pound. Halves and pieces, let's see, six, $6.99 for this, 43. There we go, this might be the best way to go. So walnuts, the best omega-3 profile. I'm getting them raw because I don't want them to be uh, roasted in expeller pressed or any kind of oil, okay? Uh, they don't have the blue diamond here, so I can't show you a perfect example. Let me see if I can show you an example of... Here we go. So you get these flavored almonds and things like that. They taste great, but look at this. Almonds, uh, maltodextrin. This actually isn't that bad, I take that back. Okay, maltodextrin still is a bummer, but these are steam pasteurized. That's cool. Usually they uh, roast them in canola oil and it defeats the whole purpose of getting a healthy fat from a nut. Even that, even that is sugar. Macadamia nuts are one of the best sources of omega-9s and omega-7s. These are cool, these are roasted in macadamia nut oil, but just look at the price. I'm trying to do Whole Foods on a budget here. I love macadamia nuts, I just don't think we're gonna find them on a budget. Yeah, we're gonna stick with the walnuts. Almonds are cheaper, but the problem is we end up with a high amount of what's called phytic acid. The phytic acid makes these hard to digest. So again, not a big deal, but trying to get cleanest possible keto for the best possible price, I get these. And I might even scrap this if I find them in the baking section, where a lot of times you can find them cheaper. That's a fun fact. You get them in the nut section, they're a lot more expensive, and you, so you might find them in the baking section. Ooh, okay, so then seaweed snacks. Really important, try to get them in olive oil. Okay, there's some employees here, so we're gonna, I'm gonna grab two of these, and we're gonna talk about them in a second. All right. So, seaweed is critical for your iodine levels in your body, which is critical for your thyroid. Your thyroid takes iodine and combines it with an amino acid called tyrosine to create active thyroid. When you're on keto, and especially as a female, you need to make sure your thyroid is upregulated and working well. And iodine from iodized salt is a very low quality way of getting iodine in. Get it from seaweed or kelp, but usually these are going to have a bunch of canola oil. This is seaweed and olive oil. Olive oil does some powerful stuff in the way of what is called OEA in the body, converts into, uh, it's oleic acid, converts into oleoethanolamine. That does, it's a tongue twister. Basically what it does is it helps turn white fat into brown fat so you burn more fat, but it's either way, it's just better than canola oil because canola oil is garbage. I'm a big fan of a lot of these vegan cheeses, believe it or not, because I try to reduce the amount of dairy I do consume with clean keto. Again, dairy is not bad, you just have to use it in moderation. So I do sometimes use a lot of these things. The hard part is on a budget, they get really expensive. Okay, so for example, these things are great in moderation, but five bucks, this goes through really quick. The other thing I just, that upsets me a little bit, um, we still have a lot of starches, water, cashews, coconut oil, potato starch, modified food starch, nutritional yeast. I mean, it's clean for the most part, but you're loading up with a bunch of weird starches that aren't exactly best on keto. So don't fall victim to some of these vegan cheeses. You just wanna use them sparingly. Again, I'm not gonna like badmouth them. They have their place. I did an entire video just on nut milks. Uh, I did it with Bobby from Flav City where we just literally stood here and we broke down all the nut milks. I would highly recommend when it comes down to the nut milks that you just go with the cleanest, simplest one. Um, the Forager brand is good, it's expensive. A lot of these are really expensive. Califia Farms, you fall victim to it because 
you end up paying a lot more money and it really isn't anything great. Almond milk, it's not organic. Natural flavors, calcium carbonate, sunflower less than, sea salt. Nothing is terrible in here, but you get tricked because it's not organic. And the thing is, with these kinds of drinks, if it's not organic, it can be a problem because they spray the bottoms of the trees and then when they shake the trees for the nuts to come down to the bottom of the trees, then they scrape them all up from the ground where they spray the bottom of the trees. So you are getting a bunch of pesticides, you are getting a bunch of garbage. Um, so if we get unsweetened 365 brand, we have organic almond milk, sea salt, tricalcium phosphate. Okay, these things, gel and gum, organic locust bean gum, aren't bad. Vitamin A palmitate is not bad. These things are not terrible, although I do say this has a lot of, um, a lot of things I would ideally like to keep out of the equation. Let's see if there's another organic one somewhere. Organic coconut milk is going to be a less inflammatory option than almond milk, but it doesn't have the full body taste. A lot of people don't like the coconut milk. So go for the organic coconut milk if you're trying to keep it as clean as humanly possible. Otherwise, let's see if there's a different organic almond. Okay, the other thing you really need to be careful with on these things is uh, the unsweetened thing. Look how similar this looks to this. One's unsweetened, one has sugar in it. Seven grams of sugar, okay? All because you didn't see this little unsweetened part. Very, very tricky. So that's probably the most important thing that I could tell you here. Yeah, and I'm having a hard time finding a good almond milk that isn't gonna break the bank. Wow, because that Three Trees brand is great, but $7. Not everyone can just swing that all the time. Let's see, what about flax milk? No, I don't think this is unsweetened. No, it's actually okay. Flax milk, flax, pea protein, pea starch, tricalcium phosphate. This is actually pretty decent stuff. Might be good if you're trying to get a little bit more in the way of omega-3s. All right, looks like, as far as I'm concerned here, I can only really go for this one to stay on a budget because I don't want to spend more than $3 on almond milk. Depending on how much your family consumes of that, you may end up getting two of them. Right. Greek yogurt. So let's see if they've got some good Greek yogurt. Faya is okay, by the way. It's not organic, but in small amounts it's okay, and it's a good source of protein, and that's a good price on that. So I'm going to get two of these, because this is a great way to have dessert. Okay, you take some of this, you mix a little bit of some like Lakanto monk fruit or something like that, you mix it up with a little bit of baking cocoa and boom, you've got like a chocolate pudding. It's perfect, okay? You just need like a quarter of this tub. Okay, so it's only gonna be like six grams of carbs at the most and you just made yourself a delicious dessert that's still probiotic filled. So if you can find some good ones, um, I'm just gonna get one of these actually. That's a really good price, but I'm just gonna get one because I see something here that I want. Cottage cheese is very difficult, but there's one particular brand, Good Culture, does a really good job. Okay, where's the ingredients on this? It is so clean. Okay, good and good. Skim milk, whole milk, cream, salt, and cultures. Compare that to, there we go, non-fat milk, organic milk, cream, and then tricalcium phosphate, organic locust bean gum, citric acid, carrageenan, vitamin A palmitate, so you can see, and that's still supposed to be an organic, clean cottage cheese. Not very good. And then the Organic Valley is the same kind of boat. Skim milk, pasteurized cream, non-fat milk, solids, salt, citric acid, guar gum, organic locust bean gum, acid. I mean, okay, this is a little bit high priced right now. I will say normally there's promotional items going on where it's like 350 or four. One of the best sources of protein that you can get because it's a cleaner case in protein. Most cottage cheese is a case in protein you don't want to consume, but if it's really clean like this, it's great. I am so set on protein now, and this is, like, I'm set. Like, I could do my week like this if I really wanted to and just get some frozen veggies and call it a day. Okay, but let's go ahead and let's grab some of this uh, grass-fed butter. Okay, we got Kerrygold, which is sort of the staple. Um, grass-fed butter, which is what we want. Here's what's interesting, okay, 369 for that. 49 cents a, all right, it's actually this that we want. Vital Farms might be a little bit of a better option. Ooh, goat milk butter, it's expensive stuff, but lower what is called A2 or A1 casein. So a healthier casein protein that's going to be better for your body overall. 
casein protein, uh, it clogs up in your gut. It creates a gel in your gut, which can be very hard for your body to break down. I'm just gonna get one thing of butter. I'll uh, do some light cooking with it, do little things like that. It wouldn't even be necessarily a necessity, but let's go ahead and get it. Okay, and then I wanna get just a little bit of heavy cream. There we go. This can be for your coffee or anything like that. Don't go for the half and half. Ladies and gentlemen, the half and half is going to be half milk, which means it's going to have milk sugar no matter what you do, and then half cream. It also has a lot more possibility to be adulterated through that milk. You're better off to go with cleaner, straight up cream. Let's see what we got. Organic heavy cream. We don't need much because we're going to be using it with coffee and stuff like that. 31 cents per ounce. Organic cream. That's all we need. All right, when it comes to bars and things like that, it's easy to uh, spend a little bit too much money. But what I wanna do here is I wanna find at least a couple little treats for myself on the go. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, so here we got, so Primal Kitchen's got some good stuff. Epic really expanding their product line, but I just, it gets a little bit expensive for the amount of food that you actually get. Um, I do like them, those are 35% off. Let's see what else we got here. There's not many true clean keto bars. A lot of them will market themselves as low carb, but when you look at it, like even this, like a bulletproof bar, still 14 grams of carbs, five grams of fiber. You barely, are still 10, 10 grams of actual, actual carbs in there. That's not gonna be keto friendly. You have two of those and you're ruined. All right, let's see. Oh, cool, okay, we've got these guys. I've talked about these. I'm gonna grab a couple of these. I'm gonna grab one of the non-plant-based one and one of the plant-based ones, because my wife really likes the plant-based ones. These truly, so Susie, who I know really well, and I've talked about them in a lot of videos before, She, this is legitimate keto. 13 grams of carbs, but eight grams of fiber. So we only have five grams of actual carbs in here, and then they also have a plant-based option. So really, really good stuff. Okay, that's a good price. Uh, you can also get them at Walmart. You can also get them uh, at Sprouts. You can also get them at Kroger. Uh, probably even cheaper because Whole Foods always charges a little bit more. But this is a really good price and probably the only legitimate keto bar you're gonna find at Whole Foods. So I'm gonna get one of each. Definitely wanna check them out. Also, I went ahead and since I work with them on so many other things, I'll put a link down below in the description so that you can check them out online if you wanna just get some if you don't have a Whole Foods close by because Susie is awesome. I've known her for a while. Really sweet Canadian gal, she's awesome. So I'll get two of these. I wish I could get more. Okay, let's see. I don't think there's a whole lot of other bars you can get. Same kind of issue with the drinks. Nothing that's really keto friendly. Trust me, I've scoured. All right, let's keep on rolling. Don't waste your money on the probiotic stuff. You're better off to get it from food. Uh, see, even in the refrigerated section with the bars, it ends up being, oh, these crack me up. So they're called space shakes. And I, I'm trying to, I'm gonna remain positive here. But all this is is coconut milk, cacao powder, sea salt and vanilla extract, and some stevia. It's literally a can of coconut milk, like a quarter of a can of milk coconut milk, and they charge eight bucks for it. Honestly, I, some, like I understand marketing, but geez, come on. Eight dollars for that? Um, all right, so when you get into the almond milks that are not in the refrigerated section, this is where you run into a problem because this is where they have preservatives and stabilizers and things like that. So even with the organic ones, they have to add some starches, rice starch, all things like that just to help stabilize. So you gotta be really careful there. Unless you absolutely have to, like you're at a real discount grocery store, just get it out of the refrigerated section. Uh, these superfood creamers are great but they're just a little bit too expensive for us. One gram of carbohydrates, coconut milk powder, Aquamin, which is calcium from renal algae, and organic virgin coconut oil. Really good stuff. Laird Superfoods is awesome. It's just not gonna fit our budget. I'm gonna get some of these guys. I don't really, I don't feel fair adding them into my budget, uh, but I'm just gonna get them for the heck of it, because these are a couple bucks a piece, which is not the cheapest, but this stuff is awesome. These are seriously one of the only drinks that I can drink when I'm fasting, and I'm fasting today, so why not? 
apple cider vinegar, acetic acid, going to help increase what's called AMPK in the cells. So it's going to make it so the cells have a, a stronger affinity to start burning their own fat. And it's going to downregulate in the brain. What that means is it's basically going to make you less hungry in the brain, but make your cells more hungry so they eat more fat. Almond butters. Get really sneaky with almond butters. First of all, $10 for that isn't the best price, but also you've got to look at really careful with almond butters. Look at this. Second ingredient, evaporated cane sugar. Okay, they, A lot of times they'll sneak that in there, so you just have to be super, super careful. It's not the best utilization of your money. I will be honest. Okay, wh why? Because this is such an easy way to overdo your calories. I would much rather you just keep it clean and keep the food in your house that you know you want to eat and that you know you should eat. So what I'll usually do is it's not the best bang for the buck, but I'll usually just get a couple little packets of almond butter. Okay, and what that does is that helps me control myself. So sure, I'm not getting bargain when I spend, you know, X amount of dollars on a big tub, but a lot of times these will be like 79 cents. They're a little bit expensive right now, but like if I were to get just a straight up regular almond butter one, which do they even have right now? I don't think they have the straight up almond butter. I can get it for a dollar, I'll get five of them, and then at least I won't eat them all the time. But as far as this goes, price-wise, let's see, the best almond butter. Wow. This is crazy. It's just like, why spend this money for extra calories, to be honest? Like, I'm on a budget. Kiddos might like it. There's a solution there. The kids might like this. $10.99. We have to get organic in this case because the almonds, you definitely just don't want to get the non-organic stuff. Wow, I, we have to 86 this, we can't get this. Uh, here's organic sunflower butter school, but they don't have the unsweetened one. Roasted sunflower seeds, oh wait, no, this is awesome. Wait, we can get this, that's not a bad price. Let's get sunflower butter. Okay, let's talk about that in a second. Okay, so the cool thing with sunflower butter, different form of fat, less omega-6. So a little bit more in the way of the omega-7s, uh, omega-9s, which actually help the utilization of omega-3s in the body. So just because the sunflower butter doesn't have omega-3s in it, doesn't mean it's bad. It has other fats that are gonna help you utilize those omega-3s in your body better with less omega-6s, the inflammatory kind that you get in almond butter. So this is cool. And organic and no sugar added to it. That is really epic. Okay, baking section. This is cool. If I wasn't on a budget, these guys have some really cool stuff. Birch vendors, keto pancakes, but 840 is just a bit much. Oh, here, check this out. All right, so remember how I was talking about making pudding with the yogurt and stuff like that? We've got to get ourselves some Lakanto. I'm just gonna get a small one, I don't even need much. That's a good price, because this is gonna last me a while. This measures better than sugar, so you don't even need as much of this as you would sugar. So for seven bucks, although it sounds like a lot of money, I put a teaspoon or two teaspoons of this in my yogurt, and now I have a pudding. Right? Or I put this in my coffee. So really good stuff. Monk fruit has some really strong herbal properties in terms of antimicrobial, antibacterial in our gut. Helps kill off the bad bacteria. Really good stuff. I've done a lot of work with Lakanto. Love these guys. And I love that they're in Whole Foods. Oh, and they have the golden version too, but they don't have it in a small bag. The golden version is just uh, more like brown sugar. Has that taste. So yeah, if you're making coffee, things like that, really good stuff. And they have the powdered one. Oh man. This is my jam. So they take the same stuff and they pulverize it into a powder. So it mixes with anything, but you can mix it with a little bit of heavy cream and make yourself like a frosting and all this kind of stuff. Oh, I might even, just for the sake of budget, I'm just gonna get this. But this one is my jam. And I before could only get it online. So really cool they have that now. Uh, I'll link out to it down below so you can check out some of the other Lakanto products. So a specific link down below in the description if you guys wanna check out some of the other stuff. They also have liquid sweeteners, which I normally uh, can't find in the store, but you can get online. Oh, cocoa, big piece of my life. So the difference between cacao and cocoa, cacao is totally unrefined. Cocoa goes through the refined process. Uh, they're both good. Cacao is going to be uh, closer to the fermented state. Yes, chocolate is technically a fermented food. So really interesting stuff, really expensive right here. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to find cocoa. Yes, here we go. Much better, much better. Organic baking cocoa, organic cocoa powder. Here we go, six bucks. Why do I want this? 
because this allows me to mix it with almond milk and make a tasty drink. It allows me to mix it with this and this and make a chocolate pudding that is totally keto friendly. And this is going to last me a month. So remember, although I'm trying to get out of here for under 200 bucks or under whatever, a lot of this stuff is going to carry over into the next week. It doesn't necessarily reflect a one week budget. Ooh, Kettle and Fire is awesome stuff too. Um, recommend getting that online. It's a lot cheaper online than it is in the grocery store. Oh, here, cool, I got the salt. So Redmond Real Salt, uh, in order of, okay, iodized salt, sea salt, from worst to best. Least preference, iodized regular salt, then sea salt, okay, then Celtic salt, then Himalayan salt, then best of the best is gonna be Redmond Real Salt. Mined in the United States, it's mined right in Utah, but it has a plethora of other minerals, not just salt. So you've got potassium, magnesium, so you're not gonna get all super bloated like you normally would if you had a bunch of regular salt. Really cool stuff, it's just a few bucks, and it's my general seasoning for everything. Salt is good on keto. You do not wanna have those electrolyte imbalances. It is okay to get this stuff. Uh, so again, next in line would be Himalayan salt, then sea salt, then of course iodized salt. Ah, here's one of my favorite sections. I did a full video on canned fish <laughs> because canned fish really, it's such a bad rap because they're canned. Guys, canned fish are really, really good. We can get some really awesome stuff at a really good price. So like when we look at wild caught salmon and a lot of things like that, this is a good price for it. Now it looks at you, $4.49 for a can. At first that sounds bad, but you think about this being a serving. We've got a couple hundred calories worth. We've got, let's see, 40 grams of protein in the can. That's a serving and it's only $4.49. I have enough protein, so I'm not gonna load up on this, but I am going to get some of my sardines. Where are they? Ooh, yes, the good ones are on sale. Sardines. Go for the ones that have the bone in. Bone in whenever possible because the bone is going to give you that vitamin D. It's also gonna give you that coenzyme Q10 and we want the skin on too. I know it sounds gross. You don't, if you can't do it, you can't do it, I get it. But we always wanna go with like this one. So wild sardines in water with sea salt, okay? So this way we're not, an alternative would be like skinless and boneless in extra virgin olive oil. Whenever possible, get them in water because then you're not A, adding extra calories in the oil, but B, you're not adding a wild card of a random oil that you don't know where it's really sourced. I want the fat from the fish. I don't want the fat from the oil. If I wanted olive oil, I'd go guzzle the jug of olive oil. In this case, I want my sardines in water. Okay, with tuna, it's funny because people automatically think because albacore is like a higher quality and more expensive, that it's a higher quality health product. It's not. Skipjack or regular chunk light, close to the same thing pretty much definitely going to be the better route and it's less expensive so we want 100 percent pole caught pole and line caught perfect dollar 99 which is a little bit steep for tuna because you can get tuna just about anywhere uh so do i, do I really want to spend the money here but for the sake of the video and the budget yes i will just to show you we are so set on protein now i don't know if there's anything else i really need if i was on a better budget uh, i'd go ahead and i'd get some oysters where they're always yep but four bucks for oysters i can get those for two dollars at trader joe's Ooh, this stuff's awesome. A little pricey for today's haul for the budget, but unorganic, unsweetened ketchup, it tastes a lot better than you think. All right, we get into the world of oils. I did a full video breakdown that break down all the oils and everything, talking about just what's good, what's bad, what you should avoid, what you shouldn't avoid. For the sake of this video, we're on a budget. Ghee is going to be the best overall fat that's going to get you the, what's called the short chain fatty acids. The ghee, it helps feed the cells in your gut. We forget that we have cells in our gut that require specific fuel, and they require fuel from short chain fatty acids that we get in ghee. Now, ghee is not the cheapest thing in the world, especially here at Whole Foods. So I don't know if this is gonna be the best solution for you on a budget here. However, we can still get a lot of that same effect by having some coconut oil. And a coconut oil, I think we're gonna save a lot of money. And coconut oil, we're gonna save a lot of money here. I do think that quite honestly, coconut oil would be better to just go get at a budget store because you can get organic coconut oil just about anywhere. So do we really even wanna spend the money here? I recommend just go to your Albertsons, go to your Kroger, go to your Safeway, wherever your basic store is and get organic coconut oil for three bucks because no matter what, you're gonna spend an arm and a leg here and I just don't even wanna blow the budget on that when I know I can get it at any store wherever you are or get it online. Okay, usually I'd also get like some marinara 
Uh, see if they've got Victoria. So I'm going to save some time here and go straight for the one that I know is good. Uh, yeah, so Victoria. Oh, that's vodka sauce. Let's see if they've got regular Victorias. Basically, with marineras, there almost always is sugar added. Let's see. Usually, make a liar out of me. Maybe not on this one. Yep. So tomatoes, we just got to be careful though. Tomato sauce in general still adds up in carbs, but it's such an easy, inexpensive way to cook things. So like, let's say for example, <laughs> let's say for example, I wanted to cook up some of my ground beef or my ground turkey or anything like that. Well, just simply mixing it with a little bit of marinara makes it a meal, right? I can put it over some spaghetti squash. I can put it over things and make it super simple. But I'm, I want to find one that's clean and inexpensive. Here's organic portobello. Let's see. Seven grams of carbs. Not bad. You got diced tomatoes. Tomato puree. Olive oil. That's nice. It's not using canola. Okay, this one already wins. Look at that. Not a bad price. Let's go ahead and let's rock with that. Now I have something to cook my ground turkey in, something to cook my ground beef in. I can make a bolognese, anything like that. Super easy. Okay, so when it comes to cookies on keto, I always like to have a little bit of some treats here, just on hand. Amber calls them emergency food, simply because when she gets cravings or anything, she's pregnant right now, so occasionally she gets the cravings, right? So when you gotta do something about that. Unfortunately, we don't always have time to make keto cookies. Let's see what they've got here. So I don't think they have any that are heavenly. Let's see. Oh, heck no, no, tons of sugar. Even sugar-free, it's, oh, sweet. Okay, they've got fat snacks. Yeah, these are, if you've watched my videos before, I've talked about these guys. So I didn't know they were in Whole Foods now. So this is awesome. So they're two for five bucks, which is a great deal, but you're really, you're already getting two cookies in there. So it's really, cheaper than that. It's really like $1.25 a cookie, which considering the ingredients, completely keto friendly. Okay, almond flour, then real butter, chocolate chips. We got stevia extract, coconut flour, palm fruit oil, organic palm fruit oil, non-GMO, non-GMO xylitol, really clean stuff. So I'm going to get uh, a chocolate chip one and I'm gonna get ooh, the last of the double chocolate. You have to check these guys out. Uh, they're at Whole Foods, they're at Walmart, and they're now at Sprouts. And I will go ahead and put a link down below for them as well, uh, because I do have an online discount for people that wanna get them there too, just because people always ask. So I've featured them in a lot of videos. So this is cool. So for five bucks, I've got my dessert essentially for the week. I could take one of these cookies, make it with the pudding that I talked about with the yogurt, and I'm in business, right? I got a chocolate pudding, my cookies, and I didn't just spend $100 on snack foods. I've spent like $10 on snack foods between the Susie's Good Fats bars, the, the fat snacks, the cocoa, like I'm at like 10, 15 bucks. It's awesome. Oh, I'm not usually a big fan of getting a bunch of snack foods, but these might be a good thing to get too. Uh, flackers, just because all they are is flaxseed pretty much. So we got flax seeds, apple cider vinegar, garlic powder, onion powder, sea salt, organic basil, really clean ingredients. It looks like it's expensive, but two of these things fill you up. They're pure fiber. Look at this, 11 grams of carbs. So at first that scares you on keto, but then you're like, wait a minute, eight grams of fiber. So it's really only three grams of carbs for eight crackers. And these things fill you up. And I'm telling you, if you have issues going to the bathroom, you won't need more after these. A lot of fiber here. I love the savory flavor, really, really good. I'm gonna get one of these because this is good for the week. I eat two of these a day and they keep me regular. It's perfect. So far, we're having good luck. We're not getting kicked out. I think they like us here. I think they know we're doing good stuff. And... All right, we still need to get some cheese and get some other things. Okay, nothing we can really get down the chip aisle. Oh, you know what? Yes, there is. Pork rinds are awesome. 35% off right now too. Very important you pay attention to this. Pork rinds, oven baked pork rinds. 40% less fat. Okay, when it comes to the pork rinds on keto, people think, oh, I want more fat. More fat is better. It's not the case. You don't just, just because you're in keto doesn't mean you wanna load up on tons and tons and tons of fats. Fats are still calories. You wanna lose weight, you wanna get in shape, you gotta still try to keep it lean, just keep it low carb. So the oven baked ones are way less fat. 
I like the chili lime flavor, but I'm gonna keep it clean and just go with pink Himalayan. Cinnamon churro, interesting. This brand is, quite honestly, tastes better. I think I actually like 4505, but for the sake of budget, I'm gonna skip on those. These taste like cloud, like they're so uh, super, super light and airy. I need to do a whole separate section on the beef jerky section here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a separate video for that, because in this case, I don't think we need to focus on this video. Oh, very important to note, just because it says cauliflower doesn't mean that it's, look at this, first ingredient, cassava, then expeller pressed sunflower oil, then cauliflower, then rice flour. Just because cauliflower is in the ingredient list doesn't mean it's made from purely cauliflower and it's not keto. If you're not on a budget, this stuff is tasty, tasty, tasty. If you're not keto, Siete is a really good clean brand. All grain free, really clean stuff, but not keto, so it's not gonna apply here. My favorite section to myth bust and to debunk the frozen area. The frozen section is where you find hidden gems, my friends, because people think the frozen section is just processed garbage, but the frozen section usually you find some really good stuff. Uh, I like to make pizzas. So, okay, I'm going to grab... Check this out. These guys, talk about them in my videos all the time. Fresh cauliflower, mozzarella, egg whites, basil, garlic, Italian spice. Super clean. 12 bucks or 13 bucks, but you get two pizza crusts. So it's really only six bucks, 650. And then you can put your meat on it. I mean, talk about, okay, now you've got dinner for two to three nights for a family of three with this. Okay, if you're trying to just indulge and eat it in one sitting, sure, maybe it's not the best bargain. But if you're trying to feed a family and have functional dinners on keto, this is the way to go. Let me show you something. I don't know if they have them here, but it's very sneaky. Look at this. Yeah. Cauliflower. power. It upsets me that this happens. Cauliflower crust, cauliflower pizza crust. Okay, let's check it out cauliflower, then brown rice flour, then cornstarch. Okay, um, 26 grams of carbs for one sixth. One sixth of this thing. Just very frustrating. That should be illegal. <laughs> you know what's funny is, and then, you know, then you look at like cauliflower, look at the carb content. It's actually legit. So don't fall victim, you have to pay attention. Let's see what else we got here. Now, a lot of the frozen foods and things like that, sure, that's not necessarily gonna work. It's not gonna work on keto anyway, but there's still some good clean stuff. Like Amy's has some good stuff if you're not keto. I just don't like that people bash the frozen food section. I think back in the days of when it was like kids cuisine and fun feast and all the things that like us kids probably grew up on, that was one thing, but a lot of this stuff is really, really clean now. And again, I'm, I'm just, I don't want the processed stuff, so I don't ever look anyway. Um, Oh, here's the, here's the veggies. Oh, yeah, you know what? So when I was in the produce section, I skimmed over everything and I ended up not grabbing anything. I might go back and grab some avocados, but for one, there was a bunch of employees there that were giving us the eye, so it was really difficult. But two, everything is so expensive and it's gonna go bad in a couple days. And on keto, to be completely honest, I don't eat a ton, a ton of veggies. My system runs nice and clean because I'm giving it the fats that it needs so my gut actually gets the stem cell activity it needs to work. I don't need tons of fiber, uh, but I still like my veggies. I still like my fruit and a little bit of fruit, like a quarter cup per day is totally fine. And look at how much cheaper this is to get organic blueberries. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Here's the organics. Like look how much cheaper it is to get organic. Yeah, $2.99 for organic wild blueberries. These are the little teeny ones like that. Really good packed full of anthocyanins. Anthocyanins are one of the only antioxidants that can get into your brain. So for $3, I get my fruit. It's gonna last me for a couple weeks. And then also it's gonna get some strawberries for $2.99 and I'm in shape. Like I don't need any more than this, at least for the week. If I wanted to put it in that yogurt again, I could put that much in <laughs> and be good. I get my sweet tooth covered, I'm good to go. Okay, now, if you're ever on a budget, 329 for frozen avocado. People forget that you can get avocado in a frozen form. So if you want to make guacamole and stuff like this, or put it in a smoothie, yes, you can make keto smoothies, and I've made recipe for them, uh, recipe videos for them. 
So I think I might just get this instead of actually getting whole avocado in this case. Like $3.29, I'm gonna spend $2 for one avocado that's gonna go bad in as soon as I open it, right? As soon as I cut it open. So that's perfect. And then broccoli. So here's what's cool. Think about how vegetables are harvested. Okay, as soon as you pick something, it starts oxidizing. Then you put it on a cart and it oxidizes more. Then you put it on a truck and it sits there and oxidizes more. And then it sits in a crate outside of a truck and it oxidizes more. And then it sits on the shelf and it oxidizes more. And then it goes into your fridge and it oxidizes more. By the time you eat that, you have denatured so many of the vitamins, you've lost so many of the antioxidants and the flavonoids, you aren't getting nearly as good of a healthy vegetable as you think. Whereas frozen, it's picked, it's put on a cart, and then it's frozen. Okay, so everything we see here is great. So for $2.29, I can get good quality organic broccoli florets that are gonna keep. It's just a no-brainer for me. I, I shop like a bachelor sometimes. I'm gonna get two, uh, I'm just gonna get one for the, the sake of this video, but you might wanna get two. Same kind of thing with Brussels sprouts, $1.29 for Brussels sprouts. And then don't be afraid of getting some of this like rice cauliflower and this stuff. These are super convenient, quick meals. If you're trying to just cook up something for your family really quick, I mean, it's easy. And then asparagus is going to be my jam. And we've got some frozen asparagus. That might be the one thing that I try to get fresh. Might as well just get the cuts and tips because that's the good stuff anyway. Like, unless you want the spears, but if you're just trying to like make a casserole or something like this, it's the way to go. Okay, ooh, so this is the area we kind of skipped over before, which was the cheese area. Lots of different cheeses to choose from, but I do like keeping it kind of clean with the cheese. If you ever want good snacks and you're not on a budget again, these little things are great. Uh, prosciutto over the salamis. The prosciutto is really just ham and salt. The salami has a bunch of other stuff in it. Uh, so those are really good, cheese rolled up in that. Uh, in terms of deli meat, prosciutto is really clean. Other than that, not a whole lot you can do in the way of deli meat. I know they'll say like um, Applegate Organics has some decent stuff, no antibiotics ever. The ingredients are pretty clean, organic chicken breast, organic chicken broth, uh, still some starches. You just don't avoid that stuff, even with the highest quality stuff. But I don't see us spending $7 for that much meat. I mean, we just have a tuna sandwich at that rate, right? Or a tuna sandwich lettuce wrap. So cheeses, you wanna either go really clean in the way of high quality, fresh mozzarella, or you're gonna to wanna to go with some kind of uh, Parmesan, something that's been aged. The longer a cheese has been aged, the lower the lactose content. Uh, so I usually say go for that or go for goat cheese, which let's see if we can get some good goat cheese here. So sheep's feta, um, goat milk feta, great, great stuff on keto. The cleanest cheese you could possibly get that way. Let's see here. I'm just gonna find some simple goat cheese. And I do wanna get some, ooh, some gruyere would be good too. So gruyere's pretty aged. Trying to see if there's a good grass-fed, grass-finished one. Cheese, again, remember, you're gonna have that A2 casein protein, so not the best stuff. Uh, that's why I'm trying to go for an aged one, so bear with me. Here we go. Oh, check this out. Okay, on sale, 379. And look at grass-fed cows. Good old, we actually have aged cheddar here. We're gonna go with this. So I do like to treat myself to a little bit of cheese. Cheese is good stuff, you know, it's just, if you overdo it, then yeah, you're gonna have a problem. So aged cheddar is gonna be the way to go. Let's see what else we got over here. That's a good deal on that. Yes, okay, so we just, 350, because it was kinda hidden. Look at this, Organic Valley, same stuff, raw, sharp cheddar cheese, pasture-raised cows, 749. Okay, we just got a good deal by getting the carry goals that you have to look around. It doesn't always have to be a $7 block of cheese. Okay, this is a really good deal. Um, if you do want regular mozzarella, things like that, mild cheddar, Monterey's, stuff like that, that's the way to go there. Uh, I do need something to grab a goat cheese. Ooh, goat cheddar. You know, I'm gonna hold off on the goat cheese here. The goat cheese is expensive. And I think we're good on the cheese that we got. If I was really stocking up for a family, maybe I'd get two or three of these. Actually, that whole area over there says organic, grass-fed, non-GMO cheeses. So those are expensive cheeses, but let's see what they got. Yeah, see, this is the fancy stuff. So in this case, I'm not gonna be able to afford it. But 
it is nice to know that this is all grass-fed, grass, -fed, grass uh, organic. So aged gray would be great. Yeah, I need to I need to brush up on my cheese stuff. Vintage cheddar also would be really good. Yeah, some Gouda doesn't really fit the vibe too much, to be honest. I will say Parmesan is one of the best inexpensive aged cheeses you can get, Parmesan Romano. Already naturally aged, aged for about 12 to 16 months, so you're getting rid of a lot of the lactose already. So really powerful stuff there. And I think we're looking in pretty good shape. I don't know what else I would really need for my family to get through the good week. There's obviously gonna be the erroneous things, you know, the spices and things like that. All those are gonna add up. For the sake of an educational grocery haul, I think this is all you need just to get the basics of a budget grocery haul at Whole Foods. So pretty basic grocery haul. Hopefully we can get out of here for under $200. You can tell that I've bagged groceries before. All right. Okay. Man, 184 bucks. And this will absolutely feed a family of three to four clean keto. You don't need to be loading up on a bunch of trash. Here's the thing, if you shop the perimeter first, just like you've always been taught and always been told, you end up in a really good situation. It's not nearly as bad as people make it out to be. So if I were to go and hit all the aisles first, I would have loaded up on a bunch of snack foods and then I never would have had the ability to get the stuff that I wanted to from the meat department. It just allows me to set the standard first with the meats and the high quality eggs and things like that first and then after that, if I have leftover, great. Then I get some snack foods. I still had 15 bucks to spare. I probably would have grabbed some more of those fat snacks, cookies, or Susie's Good Fats bars or something like that, but it's okay. I'll take that 15 bucks and go do something else with it. So anyhow, now you've got a clean keto haul at Whole Foods. A family of four, family of three, whatever, or eating like a king as a family of one, and you're set. So it doesn't have to be whole paycheck. It can be done. And we could honestly have gotten this even cheaper. So I do invite you to just let me know in the comment section below what other kind of grocery haul videos you want to see me do or what other topics you want to see me cover regarding specific ingredients. Obviously my channel's full of science, but I'd love to be able to dive in deeper to some of the other things, like specific fun things like what's this on an ingredient label, what's that? So just let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, please make sure you keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you soon.